uh, I can remember very well watching TV with just holding my breath, uh, waiting for the word to come back. And uh, it was exciting, particularly I had been down to the launch that was a few days earlier. So that, that period of time had great excitement the culmination of, of long years of a lot of work, a lot of people. At that time, I was in the executive staff. Uh, we were working on things like budgets and schedules, resources, planning and control, management systems, and those kinds of activities. Previously, I had been in the manufacturing engineering lab in the early 1960s, where we did uh, manufacturing and assembly of hardware that was to be tested or to be flown. Werner von Braun was certainly a charismatic leader, technically very, very strong as a scientist and as an engineer. Uh, he was a people person. Uh, he knew how to inspire people to give their very best. Uh, he certainly gave excellence on everything that he did, and he inspired and, and required excellence of the people that worked with him. Uh, he was, uh, as I said, technically very strong, uh, but he knew art and he knew literature and he knew almost any subject that came up for discussion and had substantive knowledge and could, could debate points or could uh, carry the discussion on a lot of subjects outside of the sciences. Uh, certainly he was a super salesman, uh, was able to communicate very, very well. I'd say that was one of his very strongest capabilities was communication with not just people with technical backgrounds, but with people, uh, the man on the street. He could convert a technical subject into something that someone who had no technical training could understand and could comprehend and could believe in uh, and would, uh, would support. He was excellent in dealing with uh, the administration and with Congress. So he just had many, many capabilities that made him virtually the perfect kind of man for the job that he had at the time. Uh, he did have a sense of humor, uh, enjoyed bringing people from dif different fields here to the center to show them the center and talk to them about what was going on. Uh, one example, I remember uh, the, uh, the surgeon from South Africa, Dr. Barnard, Christian Barnard, who was... Uh, one of the pioneers in heart surgery, uh, came to the center and spent a day here and uh, talked to the staff. And uh, Dr. Von Brown took great pleasure in bringing people of that type to the center, having them understand what was going on. I think they were instrumental in making the community what it is today, um, obviously. Uh, we probably wouldn't have the caliber of symphony orchestra that we do were it not for the musical interests of the the group uh, who came from uh, from Fort Bliss. Uh, instrumental, that group was instrumental, Dr. Von Brown personally, in causing the University of Alabama, Huntsville, to be created. He went to the legislature and appealed to the legislature to appropriate money for the university and he likewise did the same thing for the Space and Rocket Center. He was instrumental in getting the state to support that endeavor and that was just Dr. Von Braun himself. Uh, many of the other Germans were involved in the arts uh, behind the, the development of the library, uh, the uh, symphony, the arts council and other cultural activities of the area. So I think there were major contributions made by that entire group. I think it was a combination of a lot of things. Of course, the, the decision by President Kennedy to focus on the lunar landing uh, was a, an excellent step. It gave us a focus that everybody could deal with. Essentially, everybody who was here at the center at that time was working on the Apollo program, the Saturn program, whether they were working as direct te technical people or indirectly supporting the program. So everybody was focused on achieving that one major goal. I think another thing was the leadership. There was excellent leadership from Von Braun and the whole team that was uh, made up the management structure of the center. Uh, they were very strong technically uh, 
and very able to lead the people who were working with them. Uh, I think it was a, a time, a time in history when technology was ready to, to move forward rapidly and I think many people believed uh, deeply that they were not just doing something uh, to benefit themselves or to benefit the community, uh, but to benefit mankind. Well, there was so. one concept or philosophy that I think was tremendously important to that whole endeavor. It was called a concept or philosophy of automatic responsibility. And that said that if you were uh, uh, in a technical discipline and you saw a problem uh, and it was not being dealt with, that it was your automatic responsibility to either deal with that problem if it was within your expertise or to be sure that it was brought to the attention of someone who could deal with it if it was outside your field of, uh, of capability. And I think that was a, a key philosophy. There was a great deal of, of difficulty in pulling together all of the pieces that had to be pulled together, all of the elements of the Saturn system. Uh, and we didn't start out with the systems in place. We pretty much had to build the systems, define the systems for scheduling and budgets and coordination as we went along. And really that was one of the, the points of, uh, of interest, of excitement, because we were not following a cookbook. We were kind of plowing new ground, not only technically, but managerially and administratively as we went along. So that... Uh, generated a lot of interest and, and excitement among all of the people who were working on it because they were doing something new, finding a new way to do the coordination and the systems engineering and the scheduling and making everything happen when it was supposed to. Well, during the Apollo program, I, I think I mentioned that it was a, a, a single goal, a single focus that everyone worked toward. Uh, and I think that gave a focus to the activities uh, an objective that was very concrete at a very uh, firm time goal set by the president and the resources were available to go about achieving that. Uh, there was Skylab that came behind Apollo that was very successful. Uh, the Apollo Soyuz test program followed that, also successful. Uh, we were successful with the Higher Energy Astronomy Observatory that, that followed ASTP and then the shuttle came along. Um, great pride, pride in having been a part of something that I considered was uh, important to mankind, important to this country, important to international relationships and hopefully international peace. So there was a uh, great pride in having been a party to it, feeling to have made some small contribution to it. Uh, elation, of course, that it was occurring and occurring successfully and, uh, of course, some trepidation because the crew had to return from the moon. Uh, the mission wasn't over till they were safely back on Earth. So uh, all of those things, I think, uh, elation and, and pride and, and continuing concern that everything went well for the rest of the mission. Well, I would say it's still an excellent organization. It's still a can-do organization, and it's uh, capable of taking on technical challenges for the future. I would love to have the assignment to come to NASA, to go back to the moon, to go on to Mars. I think it would be in the best interest of the, of the nation. I think it would be in the best interest of the world because I believe it would, would move technology forward and I think it would help us economically, I think it would make us stronger economically and I think it would, uh, it's just a part of, of man's destiny to do that.